I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of my latest videos so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And just to make things just a little bit more interesting, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can go ahead and watch this video here. But do look at the terms and conditions as there are some age and location restrictions. I have not been outside for a long time. You remember back to the summer was the last time I was out shooting video, and there was a very good reason for that, lighting. Well, not so much lighting, it was more to do with the, the metering system that the Canon EOS R5 uses, and what I found a lot, what was really frustrating, is that as the lighting conditions changed, as the sun moved, I had an awful lot of problems, because I was shooting a lot of videos that were essentially an hour long, I'd be shooting for maybe 90 minutes, and what would happen was, is the sun would start to move, and because the R5 uses evaluative metering, even in manual mode, I would start to get blown out. I'd have problems with overexposed, being overexposed or underexposed, and it, I finally just got so frustrated having to reshoot that I ended up moving everything downstairs to the studio. Now, in the studio, my lighting is perfect. Well, for me, it's perfect, but it's taken me months. I first introduced my new lighting system, I think around November, December. And I think I spent about $500. I got a couple of Godex lights. I got three flat panels, one behind me and two out front. Then I got a ring light. And then about five months ago, six months ago, no, I actually was probably less than that, probably about four months ago, I changed my background with about five different uh, accent lights. Four of those were color-based accent lights. The other one was just white shining on the plant. So about $900 to $700 later, I got that figured out. But outside, it's very tough, especially when shooting in daylight, because the sun is so powerful, the, the types of lights that you would want to bring outside to help balance you out, or to get sun shades and all that kind of stuff, it just becomes very expensive and very difficult. And of course, by the time you've got set up, people start coming outside and playing, and now I've lost my quiet. It is winter, it's cold, it's dark. So the one nice thing about winter for sure is I don't have to worry about the sun because it's down there. It's dark, it's pitch dark, it's... What time is it? Oh, my watch is doing it. Oh, six o'clock. So 1811, it's six o'clock and it's pitch dark. And I have my own personal sun here. It's the Falcon Eyes RX DX2 and it's actually a lead-based flat panel light, but you can roll it up so it's flexible, but it comes with its own frame. It comes with a light diffusing screen as well as a grid. So it's, it's actually about 45 degrees off at this angle here. I'm also shooting in log, so that's 10-bit 422 at C-Log1, 10-bit 422, um, and so that's gonna give me much better dynamic range. Now, the last time I actually shot, I hope that's not an animal, because I can't see because I'm blinded. Last thing I want is a raccoon to attack me while I'm filming. Actually, no, that, that could be quite interesting. A coon attacking me while filming will probably be pretty good for views. So with this light here, um, it's giving me an awful lot of light. I've only got it set to 40% right now. That's right, I've only got it set at 40%. I set it to 60 and I was completely blown out. And I'd say it's about six feet away from me. The camera's about seven feet away from me. It's very powerful. Um, this light is powerful enough that if I had enough daylight, I could shoot it in the noon sun and have enough light coming on me so I could equal myself and expose myself properly even with the sun coming in overhead. And that's what I really love about powerful lights. This is just a single light source. In the summer, I did try bringing some of my Godox lights and my ring light outside shine on me with myself in the shade, and they just couldn't hand a, hold a candle to the power of the sun, even in the shade, and so I just gave up on that. But this thing here, the Falcon Eyes, it's, it's powerful. I'm, I'm just amazed at how powerful it is. And of course, because it's using LEDs, it's not making my hydrometer or electric meter, as some of you may call it, go like this, which is really, really handy. And I think the real message here is lighting. As ordinary filmmakers and photographers, we understand that light is important. But I don't think we truly understand how important it is to how we film and how we take pictures for 
a few years at least. Um, we, we start off with a zoom lens and we play around with it, we adjust it, and if we get a little bit of noise, we go, eh, I guess that's just par for the course. It's what you get when you shoot. But after a while, we start asking ourselves a question, wait a minute, how come so-and-so can produce really great results? What are they doing differently? And we find out, oh, they've got better lighting. But when you look and you see the cost of certain lighting, like starter kits can cost $300, you've got multiple different lights, and of course, the lights that you would use for photo aren't necessarily the same lights you would use for video. Well, they're not, they're different. So lighting is one of those things, like microphones, like anything in photo video, that can very easily cost you into the thousands of dollars. So it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to approach. You've got to ask yourself, well, what are you going to be filming? What are you going to be shooting? Are you going to be shooting indoors? Are you going to be shooting outdoors? There's very different capabilities that you're looking for. Now, for shooting outdoors, one thing nice about this um, Falcon Eyes, it's waterproof, down to 30 meters. It also has a remote control. It also has the ability to put batteries onto it. But this thing is designed for the weather elements. Now, obviously, in the cold, you get down to a certain temperature and things start to not go as well. And you go above a certain temperature and you can start to have problems. But my camera's likely going to have more problems or have problems before the lighting will. And I think that's the real powerful thing here. Sorry, my mouth is freezing because it's really cold outside. It's having the right tools, and if, if you're looking at starting a channel or you just do this for fun, this is your hobby, you really need to come up with a capability list and ask yourself, what do you expect out of lighting? What are you trying to accomplish? Because it is can be very, very expensive. Um, and this light here, I believe this one is $620. It's 900 or $820 Canadian. So I think it's around $620 US dollars. And that comes with the light, the, the diffuser, the grid, uh, power cable. The only thing it doesn't come with, it doesn't come with a remote control and it doesn't come with the battery. But this is, this could be your single light for shooting outside. Now, the only thing you might want to have outside of that is some sort of diffuser. So if the sun is going over you, you don't want that harsh light. You might want something like that. And also, if you're shooting at night like I am, it also works very well, too. And that's one of the advantages of winter is when it's dark, which is more than 50% of the day. Like, it gets dark here around 5, 10 right now. And it doesn't really... I guess the sun rises around 7.30, but it's not really to about 9.30 or 10 that we get the full strength of the sun. So it's very weak in winter, and having a light like this is both helpful for daylight and nighttime. So let's sum things up a little bit here. As far as using lights, if you're looking for studio work, I mean, this Falcon Eyes would work really well. You could have a single light shining on you. I've seen this with some settings where people will have one light out front, and this can work well for you there, but you still need lights behind you shining down, and of course you need some sort of light illuminating your background. To some degree, I'd call them accent lights. These could be $20 lights, like the Ulanzi lights, and they're really good for that, but you're, you're looking for a really good studio light. This will do it. But the best thing about the Falcon Eyes is how this works outside, which is why I'm filming outside. Again, the strength of the light right now is at 40%, and that's with the diffuser and the grid on right now, 40%. So I could move this light much further away. I probably would even tweak it. I'd say 40% with it being about six feet away is not bad, but I don't like necessarily the light on my face. I'd probably tweak it a little bit. but. I've got so much to do today. I've got so many products that are coming in that I need to get to review. I'm about ready to hit 20,000 subscribers. And if you like news, reviews, and tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click notifications and choose all. So that way, as soon as I release a video, you're notified right away. Uh, now, one thing I do apologize about, because I've got the LC to LCD turned around, I'm probably looking at the LCD more often than I should. I should know better, and I do know better, but. I'm so blinded by this light right now. I'm not used to shooting outside in the dark like this. Um, I did shoot, I think it was last July when I had the R5 for a little bit. I shot at 10 o'clock at night. And the only thing I was using to illuminate the scene was these um, um, outdoor LED lights. And they're not very bright. And I had, I think, just a little bit of light coming from the house. And that was enough with F1.2 with C-Log to expose the scene well enough. Now here I'm using F2.8 
uh, with the shutter at 160 and I think the ISO is on auto and it's somewhere floating around 2000 and 4000 so very different lighting but as far as the Falcon Eyes RX um, DX2 I highly recommend it for your shooting outside I think it's going to give you more than enough power to help you when the sun is out or in the shade or even at night it works very well in the studio too but the full strength of this thing is really um, when you're outdoors it's just amazing the power it brings but that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Cinco Lab S6E and M3 shotgun microphones. I'm going to be giving these two microphones away to one lucky viewer in less than 200 subscribers now. So I'm 200 subscribers away from 20,000. And then once I hit 20,000, I've got a video coming out talking about my new prize bundles. And what I'm going to be giving away is two prize bundles. The first prize bundle is going to be an Angelbird prize bundles with two 128 gigabyte V90 cards, as well as a dual SD card reader. So you're going to have a really good memory kit there no matter what camera you have. These SD cards are going to work. If you have a camera that only accepts UHS-1, no worries. These are backwards compatible. And then the runner-up will get a Ulanzi light uh, package. They're LED lights. I've got about five of them and they're anything from ones that'll work underwater that can fit on top of your camera in the hot shoe or to help accent you when you're going around doing some run and gun work. Not as powerful as the Falcon Ice, though. And of course, once we reach 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, and on the fact that I've got a bright sun <laughs> staring at me here, this is really strange. And I keep looking at the LCD. I'm sorry about that, but, you know, um, <laughs> I just can't believe how bright this is. This is amazing. I'm, I'm more excited than anything else. I love technology that works. And it gives you more than enough power that you're not cranking up to 100 every time and risking burning it out. Here I am. I'm just barely giving her the beans and it's very bright. So anyhow, thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again soon.